Pro or are studying for a wireless cert, Wi-Fi dead spots and signal issues are a pain. They can derail voice over IP calls and video conferences, slow down your work, and cause Netflix to buffer. As a result, solutions that can minimize wireless issues and help ensure you have a strong Wi-Fi connection are popular. One of the more popular solutions are Wi-Fi extenders. Now, there are plenty of recommendations against using Wi-Fi extenders, and they have a bad rap in some IT circles. Part of the reason for this is simple. A Wi-Fi extender isn't a cure-all for Wi-Fi issues. Sometimes, running a cable is a better solution. The key is knowing what wireless problems you need to solve and selecting the right tool for the job. Keep in mind that many wireless devices can serve multiple functions, say like Wi-Fi routers can often be reconfigured to act as extenders. And something else to remember, all the standard rules and best practices around Wi-Fi device positioning, 802.11 protocols and Wi-Fi bands and channel widths, they still apply. My friend and colleague Keith Barker explains. Over the years, we often spend quite a bit of money in getting good Wi-Fi for our home or small office. Uh, I keep a lot of my old gear. I dug some of it out. Here's an old D-Link router with a wireless access point built in that supports the Wi-Fi. Kept that. Don't think I'll be using that again. Here's an older one from Cisco Systems, the Cisco Valet. That was also a lot of fun in its day. I also have an Airport Extreme that I absolutely love. It's been doing a great job for many, many years. I no longer use that. <laughs> Here is an Airport Express, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, here's a commercial AP from Cisco Systems, an access point that would be part of a larger infrastructure um, that has its place. Here's a Google Wi-Fi mesh wireless access point. They call it a Google Wi-Fi point. It's one of three. I've got three in my home here that I use for mesh Wi-Fi networks. It's fantastic. Um, here's another high-end or fairly high-end for the home office type of access point as well. It supports some of the newer protocols, including 802.11ax, which they're now calling Wi-Fi 6. So um, Wi-Fi, it's important because we want the convenience of it and we spend a lot of money on it. But what happens if we spend a lot of money on our Wi-Fi access points and routers and such, and yet we still have problems. In this nugget, I'd like to chat with you about one specific thing that we can do to improve our Wi-Fi situation with the gear that we currently have in place. And for those of us who are having this specific problem, which we're going to describe right now, this solution is amazing. Imagine we're going to a grocery store, and this grocery store has three checkout lanes that are currently open. Lane number one, lane number six, and lane number 11. Now, if those are the only three that are open and there's 40 people lined up in line one and there's 40 people lined up in line six and there are zero people lined up in lane 11, to make it more efficient for us, we should move over to that lane to get the better and faster service because there's no wait. Well, in the world of Wi-Fi, we have two major categories of frequencies that we use. One is the 2.4 gigahertz range of frequencies and the other is the five gigahertz range of frequencies. So for our discussion, I'm gonna talk about the 2.4 gigahertz range, but the same concept applies to five as far as getting in a lane that's not crowded. So the only three center channels in the 2.4 gigahertz range that won't overlap with each other for using narrow bands is if we're lined up and centered on channel one. And if we have somebody else next to us who's lined up and centered on channel six, we're not gonna run into them. We're not like in the same lane. We have our own dedicated lane, if you will. And then somebody who's centered on channel 11 is gonna be using these ranges of frequency all in the 2.4 gigahertz range, but they're not walking on top of each other. And the question may come up, well, Keith, if I knew that everybody was using channel one, uh, I would, you know, I'd wanna to move to a less busy channel. Absolutely, yes, but the challenge is we need tools to identify, first of all, do we have a conflict? And also, how is our Wi-Fi doing to begin with? So one of the tools that we can use just to assess our Wi-Fi locally from our mobile devices to the actual router inside of our home or office is a tool called Wi-Fi Sweet Spots. I'll put up a screenshot here so you can look for it in your favorite mobile device app store. And so basically you download this and you can run it and it will tell you the connection speed that you have throughput wise from your mobile device to the router, which is effectively measuring how is your Wi-Fi doing at this moment? So you can take this and walk around the house, find dead spots and identify, whoa, this is going way down to one or two megabits per second, or wow, this is four or 500 megabits everywhere. So that's a great tool to assess, first of all, how is your Wi-Fi doing? Now, secondly, if we identify that there are problems and the Wi-Fi seems to be dipping up and down and changing pretty radically, and there's not a whole bunch of other demand going on in the house, we may have a challenge with us and many of our neighbors conflicting and trying to use the same set of frequencies. 
So to identify what channels are currently in use, we're going to use another tool. And there's a lot of free ones out there. The one tool I'd like to talk about that's free on Mac and Windows is a little tool called NetSpot. So I've opened up NetSpot Discover. I'm just using the free edition. It doesn't cost anything. It works on Mac, works on Windows. And I've also got a Wi-Fi adapter in the computer that's running this software. So if we wanted to, we could just sort based on the signal. So I'm going to click on the signal column here, make sure the arrow is pointing down. And that's going to put the strongest access points with the strongest signals up on top. And then as we go down the list, they'll get lower and lower in strength. And what we're interested in is, is somebody competing or are we competing with a lot of other people on the exact same frequencies? So I have an access point with our Wi-Fi. That's the one that we're using. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And if I click on channels 2.4 gigahertz, currently this shows that it's centered on channel one. Also, it's not using a narrow band. Normally, it would go from here over with a 20 megahertz wide band of frequencies in that 2.4 space centered on channel one. But this access point is actually using a wide band of 40 megahertz wide. In either case, we're centered on channel number one. So if we want to see our competition, and I'll go ahead and bring this down a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and put a check next to everybody who's 2.4 gigahertz and has a strong signal. So here in the band column right here, there's a 2.4 gigahertz and there's a 2.4 gigahertz and there's a 2.4 gigahertz and there's another 2.4 gigahertz and another one. Great. And then as the signals get weaker and weaker, I'm not too concerned about those because we're not fighting or competing as much because those other signals are fairly weak. So if we bring up the output here with the channels 2.4 gigahertz tab selected, and also to make it a little bit easier to read, I'll go ahead and click on our Wi-Fi to shade that in. You'll notice that we're competing right here with the center channel of one with some other access points. And what we'd want to do, ideally, if, if nothing out here is being used, we'd want to take our Wi-Fi and move the center channel over to 11. So in the 2.4 gigahertz range, the three center channels that are intended to be non-overlapping are 1, 6, and 11. So if one is all tied up and a lot of busy stuff going on, what we'd want to do is change our access point to move it over to the center channel of 11. So how you change the channel is going to depend on the wireless access point slash router that you have. There's very often a graphical user interface. You access it with a browser, or if they have an app, you can use the app to do it. In this case, it's the Apple Airport Extreme I put to work on that channel. And so I'm just going into Airport and going to change the channel to channel 11. And with that change done, I'll click on Done. And in a few moments, it's going to change its center channel from channel 1, where it was, over to a much more open and less crowded field, centering its channel on 11. And there we go, it just happened real time. So now our Wi-Fi is on center channel 11. And if that was the cause for our challenge and our problem with Wi-Fi connectivity, that is gonna help a bunch. Now in a busy environment, there's gonna be a lot of frequencies that are in use. So if we can't have an open channel where nobody else is using it, we might wanna look for one where somebody with a very low signal that we can barely see is using that and then ours will be stronger on top of it. The key is don't pile up with a whole bunch of other access points that have super strong signals on the same center frequency. Choose one that is less busy and that's gonna improve our Wi-Fi performance. And then the third step is to assess again. Take that Sweet Spots app and then once we're on the new channel, go ahead and run it and see if there's improvement with the Wi-Fi connectivity in your house or building based on that change that you made. So even though the default function on many access points is auto, meaning I ought to be able to figure out the best channel to use, it doesn't always choose the best channel. And as a result, by stepping in, looking what channels are used, and then making manual changes could dramatically increase our throughput on our Wi-Fi networks. The term Wi-Fi extender can mean different things depending on the context. Wi-Fi extender and Wi-Fi repeater are often used interchangeably to refer to devices that retransmit wireless signals. At the same time, there are plenty of attempts to explain the differences between extenders and repeaters online. And to that, the term Wi-Fi booster gets thrown around to mean the same thing as Wi-Fi extender, and things can get confusing fast. Unfortunately, we can't make marketers everywhere agree to the standard set of definitions, but we can help boil things down to what the different terms generally imply and look at the technical differences. In most cases, Wi-Fi extenders, Wi-Fi boosters, and Wi-Fi repeaters refer to devices that rebroadcast an existing network's wireless signal. When you add a wireless extender to a Wi-Fi network, you can boost the signal range. For example, suppose you only have Wi-Fi in 80% of your home. A properly placed extender could help with that last 20%. Well, that's great, but there are trade-offs to be aware of. Let's think about what adding an extender to a simple wireless network does. 
When clients connect through the extender, data will be sent from the client to the extender to the wireless router and then off to its destination. Inbound packets will then follow the same path in reverse. As you might expect, the additional retransmission of the signal can add some latency. In many cases, wireless extenders split their bandwidth between router communication and client device. This can result in cutting your throughput in half or more. Also, when operating on the same wireless bandwidth and channel, client devices and extenders compete for bandwidth, which increases network congestion. Some dual band extenders can be configured to dedicate a radio for backhaul communication with the router, but wireless backhaul comes with some performance trade-offs. Let's go over the pros and cons. Here's some pros. There's no need for a wired network connection, and it can provide coverage in existing dead spots. Here's some cons. It can introduce additional throughput and latency issues and potential interference challenges. A device that connects to an existing network using a wired connection and creates a new Wi-Fi network is known as a wireless access point, or WAP. Keep in mind, WAPs are sometimes referred to as wired extenders. The fundamental difference between a WAP and a wireless extender is that WAPs use a wired backhaul to create a new wireless local area network, or a WLAN. The wired connection will generally have a more throughput and be more reliable. A new WLAN will also minimize congestion and interference issues relative to the wireless extender approach. The downside to using a WAP is obvious. You must run a cable. Getting a cable where you need it isn't always practical, even if you are knowledgeable about cabling. Here's some WAP pros. It has reliable wired backhaul connection, and the dedicated WLAN avoids interference and latency issues of wireless extenders. Here's the con. The need for a cable limits placement flexibility. So, let's talk about when you would use a Wi-Fi extender. Generally, it's pretty straightforward because it's a relatively low-cost way to extend the signal range. Just remember the trade-offs related to performance and interference that we went over. If you have a network throughput or a congestion problem, a wireless extender probably isn't the right tool for the job. So, when can a wireless extender help? Suppose you have a three-story building and your Wi-Fi router is on floor one. The signal is still strong in the second floor, but doesn't quite reach the third. Placing a wireless extender on the second floor can give the connection the extra boost required for the third floor. Now, what if something is blocking the Wi-Fi signal? Physical objects can impede radio signals like Wi-Fi. If there are physical obstructions between your client devices and the Wi-Fi router, a strategically placed wireless extender may help. Don't forget to position the extender somewhere the signal is still strong. Maybe your client devices are just too far from the router. Even if there aren't physical obstructions between your devices and the Wi-Fi router, distance may be an issue. Adding an extender to the mix may help in this case as well. There are plenty of different devices out there that get labeled as Wi-Fi extenders of some sort. Not all of these fit neatly into the wireless extender versus WAP definition, so let's look at some more popular options. Single band Wi-Fi repeaters are the most basic example of a wireless extender. They will either support 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz bands. They generally must use the same Wi-Fi frequency and channel to communicate with clients and routers. Because of this, single band repeaters can be very susceptible to the throughput reduction and network congestion issues we talked about. Single band repeaters are also generally low cost. If you're looking for a low price point extender, the single band Wi-Fi repeater may do the trick. Make sure to confirm the extender is compatible with your router specifications. Like dual band Wi-Fi routers, dual band Wi-Fi repeaters support both 2.4 GHz and 5 GHz Wi-Fi frequencies. By supporting two separate bands, some dual band repeaters can dedicate one for backhaul traffic to the router and the other for clients. This can reduce some of the performance trade-offs associated with single band repeaters. However, it isn't a given that dual band repeater will support dedicating a band to backhaul. Be sure to look for the wireless extender to call out dedicated backhaul or similar if that's the feature you want. Also, technologies like beam farming and NU MIMO, multi-user, multiple input, multiple output, can help improve performance. In most cases today, if you're going to invest in a wireless extender, you'll probably want to go dual band. It gives you more flexibility and a broader range of support. What many of us know as wireless access points are sometimes referred to as wired Wi-Fi extenders. If the device uses a wired connection for backhaul to the router and creates a new WLAN, it falls in this category. As a rule of thumb, at least until 5G and Wi-Fi 6 e become more prevalent, when looking into Wi-Fi extender solutions, if you can run a cable and can't afford any performance degradation, you should probably just run the cable. Powerlan adapters aren't Wi-Fi extenders per se, but you will sometimes see them marketed as a comparable solution. A Powerlan adapter transmits network data over the existing electrical system in the building. Some Powerlan adapters support Wi-Fi access in addition to wired connections. 
While there are some usage caveats, these adapters can prove useful in getting Wi-Fi to otherwise hard to reach spots. Wi-Fi mesh systems have seen a rise in popularity. Solutions like Google's Nest, Dell Eero, and Netgear's Orbi are three popular examples of Wi-Fi mesh systems. Under the hood, these systems work similarly to a Wi-Fi router and wireless extenders. They are a network of access points that send wireless signal back and forth between one another to clients and to the upstream router. At a high level, this means that Wi-Fi mesh systems have the same trade-offs as using traditional Wi-Fi repeaters, but the upside is that all the mesh access points are designed to work together to provide optimal coverage in a given area. The idea is that the mesh should provide a lot of the upside that wireless extenders can deliver while minimizing that downside. While the device's positioning is still important, mesh can take many of the configuration and management hassles out of the equation. As a result, mesh systems can provide an advantage over more traditional router and extender configurations, particularly for less tech-savvy users. So, you've done your research and decided that a Wi-Fi extender is what you need. The next step is choosing one. Well, we've selected three Wi-Fi extenders that stand out based on the opinions from around the internet, specifications, and user reviews. For this list, we're focusing on wireless extenders that would make sense for a home or small business use. The first one is TP-Link RE650. The dual-band RE650 Wi-Fi range extender can act as a wireless extender or WAP in AP mode. It supports 4x4 MU MIMO to simultaneously transfer data to multiple devices. Keep in mind that clients must support 4x4 MU MIMO. Beamforming allows the RE650 to send targeted signals to improve connection strength for select devices. And how's that overall online feedback? Well, there are plenty of users with a positive experience with the RE650, and the overall 3.9 star Amazon rating holds up on fake spot as well. If you don't want to break the bank, the EX3700 is a popular dual band wireless extender available for under 50 bucks. It still supports 802.11ac as well as 802.11b, g, and n, despite the lower price tag. It doesn't offer beamforming, MU MIMO, or comparable technologies you might find more expensive extenders. However, if you're looking for a lower budget option, the EX3700 specifications and user reviews hold up well. The EX7700 is a tri-band Wi-Fi extender, and one of the bands is a dedicated link for backhaul straight to the router. This approach to extending Wi-Fi can help limit the throughput loss with other extenders. It also supports Wi-Fi mesh and Netgear's Fastlane 3 technology. Now, one red flag that stuck out was FakeSpot indicating a high number of unreliable reviews for the EX7700's Amazon and Walmart pages. But some users have reported success with the EX7700, and it has features that set it apart from many other Wi-Fi extenders. So, what do we learn? Wi-Fi extenders are absolutely worth it, usually. If you understand the trade-offs, wireless extenders can be a practical fix to a real problem. The key is knowing when a Wi-Fi extender makes sense and when it does not make sense. Cost, performance, and your requirements will all come into play. With Wi-Fi, there are too many moving parts for a one-size-fits-all solution. It's up to you to know how to diagnose them and pick the right tool for the job. Thanks for watching. If you're looking to get your IT career started or just want to browse around a library, sign up for a free CBT Nuggets trial. Explore our courses, take practice exams, and get studying for your certifications. And don't forget, to subscribe below.